Are you watching Hindustan Times? And I'm Aditi Prasad. And with me today is, again, the editor-in-chief of the paper, Sukumar Ranganathan. Welcome, Sukumar, to the show. Uh, if like us, uh, like Sukumar and me, if you are in Delhi today, uh, over the last few days, we've had a wonderful uh, weather spell, uh, lots of rains. Uh, in fact, uh, inundated with rains, of course, comes with the usual problems of traffic snarls, water inundations, uh, rivers, uh, roads turning into rivers. But uh, that, of course, you win some and you lose some. But the weather has been great. But today, what we're going to talk about, our focus on HT Inside today, is uh, this new monsoon that we are seeing today. And Sukumar is going to tell us uh, these short, intense bursts, uh, you know, followed by dry spells. And then again, you know, intense spells uh, of, uh, you know, crazy rain, like we've seen in Delhi over the last few days. Uh, can you explain this phenomena to us? I wouldn't call it wonderful, right? What's happened over the past uh, few days uh, because we've had these spells of rain typically in the morning, the time when everyone gets to work. Yeah. And unfortunately in Delhi, I mean, fortunately or unfortunately, it's good that schools are reopening. It's unfortunate they had to do so in the middle of one such spell. Schools reopened and you had this major problem on the roads and uh, you had water pretty much everywhere. Uh, of course, uh, not really the subject of our discussion. It's not just Delhi. You, everyone's seen images of what's happening in New York. Absolutely. Right? I mean, uh, this is the new normal. And, and we will come to that in a bit because there are fundamental causes of this which are far more important. But uh, the phenomenon itself is strange. Uh, it, it's not something that's emerged this year. It's, a, it's something that's crept, out, crept up on us gradually. So if you look at it over the last uh, 10 years, uh, you will see it increasingly gathering momentum. And it's simply this. Uh, we all tend to look at monsoon rain in terms of averages, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we look at the overall monsoon rain and we say it's normal. And, and when the India Meteorological Department, IMD, says that it's normal, it means it's either up to 20% more or 20% less. So there's a band. So you have an average of 50 years, mm -hmm. which is right in the middle. And if it's either 20% more or 20% less in that in that band, it's called normal rainfall. And, and everyone's been looking at it and saying, great, things are normal. But what has happened is we are hitting that normal in a fewer number of days. Right. So what we are seeing is a lot of rain falling in a few days. Let me explain this with an example, which will be easier to understand you and I are both fellow sufferers in Delhi. Mm -hmm. So let me give the example of Delhi. Uh, in the middle of Delhi, in the middle of August, Delhi was hugely deficient in rain, right? I mean... Right, uh, we were sweating it out. Hence, yeah. I called the weather <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was around... Uh, uh, the August deficiency was around 83% in the middle of the month. Hmm. We made up this deficiency in three days. In three spells, sorry. Yeah. In three spells, three spells across two days. So two of those spells were on August 21st and one of those spells was on the last day of the month, which was August 31st. And boom, right? I mean, and these are three-hour spells. Now, the unfortunate thing about these three-hour or four-hour or five-hour windows is they're not captured in uh, IMD's gridded data set. Now, this is probably the most elaborate data set of rainfall in this country, but it's a 24-hour period. So it doesn't really capture the intensity of rainfall because it, it, it gives it across the 24 hour period. Whereas if you break it down and you look at it and you see a lot of rain falling in three hours. Hmm. Now what happens when a lot of rain follow, falls in three hours or four hours? Hmm. Clearly the drainage system can't cope with it. Uh, clearly the recharge system can't cope with it because we've just messed up the whole thing. Um, I'm told the main reason why the drainage system can't cope with it in many parts of the country is because of what we all celebrated in the 90s, the great sachet revolution. Everything in India comes in sachets, right? right? I mean, from gutka, which is illegal in most cities, by the way, uh, to uh, chips. Uh, to, to shampoo packs. Uh, to shampoos, Correct. to everything comes yeah. in uh, the sachets. People just uh, rip it open, pop whatever it is in their mouth and or dump. use whatever it is and dump it. And it is just going and clogging the drains. And, and we clearly, we, we, we all saw what happened in Delhi, right? I mean, a lot of homes reported water coming Absolutely. in. Absolutely. A lot of offices reported water coming in. Um, but like, again, like I said, not just Delhi. It's happening in many parts of the world. And, and we are actually beginning to see this new monsoon pattern. Now, how 
prevalent is it? Because I gave you Delhi's example. So if you were to look at more rain falling in fewer days, that's really what you need to look at, right? It's happening in India as a whole, right? So that's what the numbers show. It's happening in India as a whole, and it's happening in 10 of the large states. It's not happening in every state, but over a period of time, you'll start seeing it happen in all states. Will there be regional variations? Of course there will be. Uh, can I comment on them? Very difficult because these are emerging again. And yet again, I think the regional variations, eventually science will show that these are also probably the result of what I hinted as the cause of everything, mm. which is the climate crisis. All right. Uh, so basically what you're saying is that the climate crisis is the cause behind these erratic uh, rainfalls where short bursts followed by dry spells and you're saying that um, it's across the country, it's not just in, in and Delhi. And across the world. And across the world. Absolutely. What you said the climate crisis is causing it. Here on, what can we expect? What is the way forward? What do we need to, I mean, is this something that uh, we should be scared of? Is it something that uh, can affect our uh, agriculture, for instance? Uh, because that is... Excellent question. Yeah. Excellent question. Yeah. It can. Simple answer, it can. Um, the IPCC report, the Intergovernmental Panel of Cli uh, Climate Change, came up with its physical science assessment report recently, a few weeks back. And interestingly enough, one of the things that it pointed out was erratic monsoons in India. And mm. what we are seeing is a classic erratic monsoon, and this is the new normal. It, it, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, people will know nothing else. They will only know this erratic monsoon. What does this mean? Uh, this means... Uh, apart from everything else that it means for our cities, for our people, for diseases, and, and, and all those are obvious linkages that you can make, uh, it means a lot for cropping patterns. Right. Because there's a certain cropping pattern that we follow, uh, hugely dependent on water. Why is it dependent on water? Because 50 to 60 percent, depending on who you read or who you it's listen to, is dependent on, on rainwater. It's rain fed. Yeah. The rest is irrigation. Hmm. And if that pattern changes, your cropping patterns will have to change to the extent that what you grow may have to change, right? It, of course, it isn't just rainfall that's going to cause this. It's also temperature. Right? So one of the findings of the IPCC report is that this 1.5 degree centigrade warming over pre-pandemic, over pre, sorry, everything I keep saying pre-pandemic, mm. over pre-industrial level, uh, levels will be hit in the next 20 years. Now, what does this mean? This means that many parts of India, which are closer to the equator, so you keep going down, you keep getting closer to the equator, right? They'll all get warmer. And, and as they get warmer, you're not going to be able to grow the same kind of crops that you're growing there now. So mm. on one side, you have the temperature. On the other side, you have these erratic monsoons. So it means over a long period of time, and, and I, I, I mean over a 20-year period, right. a significant change that we are going to make in cropping patterns uh, we obviously can't be dependent on irrigation because we know that the water table is going down everywhere. Uh, there's improper water usage in agriculture. We grow the wrong crops. Um, we've shown in, uh, through an analysis that we carried um, that many of the crops that India grows and actually exports are rich in water. So we're mm. effectively <laughs> exporting water, right? Mm. Sugar, for instance, is yeah. very, very water in Basmati, right? Again, I mean, yeah. India's most Absolutely. famous agricultural export, export. is hugely um, water dependent. Right? Now, uh, there are other aspects also, which I don't think we should go into because we don't have the time, but I just want to mention this. Look at the Punjab belt, Punjab and Haryana, rice, Basmati, because they want to squeeze in more cropping cycles, the fundamental cause of the bad ad in Delhi which is caused in a limited period by stubble burning because right. otherwise it's caused by other factors, but mm. it spikes in a four to six week period because of stubble burning. That is caused by this desire to squeeze in another, another cycle. cycle yeah. right? and, no. and, and so that is really the issue.
All right. Uh, you know, you, you pointed out the after effects or the, or the fallout of what this erratic monsoon uh, would do. But what about the authorities, the powers that be in this, in the country? Are they, you, do you believe that they've taken cognizance of this? Are the authorities already aware of these changes? And are, are there moves in motion to sort of alert respective, let's say for the farmers, for instance, uh, you know, tell them that, educate them about how they should, you know, because otherwise then there's, it's a it's a crisis that we are staring at, uh, which uh, could have been averted uh, by timely intervention. Again, great question. Now, uh, at the very, very short term management level, we are quite bad as evident from what's happening, right? We're simple things like desilting drains, mm. making sure we have effective drainage networks. Uh, local organizations, local corporations, uh, municipal bodies, uh, local governments do a pretty bad job of it. Not just, I mean, and, and I don't just don't mean the city where we live, Delhi, mm -hmm. I mean across the country. It's the same problem in Bombay, it's the same problem in Chennai, it's the same problem in Bangalore, it's pretty much the same problem in every city in this country. They all wake up after uh, Gurugram, same problem. Uh, marginally better in all, I mean, it depends, right? I mean, in one year in one city, it might be better because you get an efficient bureaucrat who says, I'm going to try and sort this out and it works to a certain extent. But largely it doesn't work and it doesn't work for the fundamental reason that uh, we build over natural waterways. We build over uh, natural water recharge, um, utilities or facilities, right? I mean, these huge commons that you have, land, uh, sometimes in the riverbed or, or the river plains, and or sometimes in paths leading to them, are natural uh, drains, mm -hmm. right? In, in which right. water recharges, and we just build all over it. So, so short-term management is pretty bad. I would very much like, to, uh, like us to have a good medium-term and long-term plan, but again, I don't think... Uh, our governments, and I just don't mean the union government, they're also responsible, but I mean every government, I don't think we pay enough attention to the future. Mm. We are so bothered about the here and now, mm. which we anyway mismanage, because if, right. we are, if we are very good at the here and now, then the roads are not going to get flooded. Mm. But we are so bothered about the here and now that we are not looking at the long-term impact of what we just spoke about, what the climate crisis means for cropping patterns, what erratic monsoon means for cropping patterns. Should farmers be growing something else? Uh, should they be growing them at different times of the year? Right. Should the sowing patterns change? So these are the kind of things that they should be thinking of. These are very, very science-based discussions. Hmm. And governments everywhere are pretty uncomfortable with science. Uh, it's, it's far easier for them to no, go by popular slogans rather than science. Yeah, because science doesn't win them elections, popular slogans do. But uh, thanks for the time. I mean, I started this conversation with saying wonderful and whatever. And but by the end of this conversation, I'm actually dreading what's going to happen over the next few years. But thank you so much for uh, joining us for this broadcast. Thank you, viewers, for watching this broadcast. Uh, I hope you're more informed about the fact that we are now in a in an era where going forward we are going to see these erratic patchy monsoons short dry spells uh, sorry short uh, uh, you know very spells of heavy rains and then uh, long dry spells in between or vice versa and uh, but going forward, the larger problems that this is going to create, and I hope the governments uh, do take note and take requisite action. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm.